Welcome back to Species Profile. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing our spotlight on potentially one of the cutest species ever to live, the koala. But sadly, this adorable marsupial is under threat. But could there be hope for this threatened species? Sometimes referred to as a koala bear, this bear is actually a marsupial. Marsupials are mammals that give birth to premature young, which after birth develop in a pouch. Nowadays, most marsupials are found in Papua New Guinea and Australia, although there are some cases of marsupials in the Americas. The first European to record koalas is a man named John Price, who described the marsupials in an account of his journey into the Blue Mountains near Sydney back in 1798. In 1816, the koala was given its scientific name, Fascalactos cinereus, which translates to ash grey pouched bear, which, as previously mentioned, wrongly classifies them as bears. However, soon after 1816, the mistake in naming was discovered, and it is now scientific knowledge that the koala is in fact a marsupial. The closest relative of the koala is the common wombat. This rather square animal has a close resemblance to its arboreal cousin, but prefers to live out its days in underground burrows rather than in trees. It's believed that the koala is split into three subspecies, although some scientists argue there are only two. The three subspecies are split dependent on their geographical distribution, with there being northern, intermediate and southern koala subspecies. The koala subspecies do also have some physical differences. The subspecies living in all the ranges of Queensland weigh only half of the 14 kilograms that the southern koalas weigh. Scientists believe that the size difference is an adaptation to allow the koalas to survive the colder winters of southern Australia. The koala is adapted to its arboreal lifestyle, having an excellent sense of balance. Koalas have a very strong thigh muscle, which allows them to climb up into the trees. On each of their paws, the koala has five digits, and to allow them to grasp onto their home trees, two digits on the front paw and the innermost digit of the hind foot are opposable to allow them to clasp onto the branches. On the hind paws, the second and third digits are fused into a form of grooming claw. Koalas do not have an external tail, but there is evidence of a tail in their skeletal structure. This proves that at some point in their evolution, the koala did have a tail. Around 45 million years ago, the Australian continent started to separate from the Antarctic and move northward. This is when it is believed koalas first evolved. We have found fossil remains of koala-like animals from around 25 million years ago. Slowly the climate changed and the Australian continent became drier, this led to eucalyptus evolving, which became the primary food source for the koalas. The indigenous people of Australia are not thought to have arrived until around 60,000 years ago. At this point, koalas became important in the culture of the Aboriginal people, featuring in legends and myths, along with other members of the Australian fauna. In the Aboriginal language, koala is meant to mean no drink. However, it is not as simple as it might seem. The Aboriginal people of Australia speak many different languages, and the koala is referred to as the Kulawong, Borobi, Gorobun and Kulawine in the accounts written by early settlers. Before the arrival of the Europeans in 1788, the koalas were a readily available source of food and were widespread across the Australian continent. With the arrival of the new colony, forests were cleared with farmland, and this was a devastating loss for the native wildlife. Identified as a source of fur, millions of koalas were killed during the period of the first settlers until the 1930s. During this time, the unregulated hunting for their pelts their koalas had become extinct in South Australia, and numbers in Victoria were thought to be as low as just 500 animals. Unfortunately, this did not stop the hunting as attention turned to the koalas of Queensland. In 1919, the Queensland government announced a six-month open season, which was then closed until 1927. However, when the season reopened in 1927, 800,000 of Queensland's koalas were killed in a single month. This unsurprisingly outraged the public, and in the 1930s the koala was declared a protected species. Sadly, this would not be much good, as the habitat the koalas relied upon for food and shelter had no such protection. Mainland and Eastern Australia is the home of the koala, with a few populations on some islands off the southern and eastern coasts. Whilst the eucalyptus forests are famous for being the favoured home of the koalas, they are also important habitats for us, as they have been shown to be some of the most important stores of carbon. One tree in Brisbane, Australia was measured at an estimated 200 years old. It was found that this one tree holds 180 tonnes of carbon. This amount of carbon on the global market could be worth around 6,000 Australian dollars. Later, another tree was measured, the known planting date being the 1st of February 1988. This tree, at 34 years old, only has an estimated 0.7 tonnes of carbon contained within it. This shows that the older trees are important in the fight against carbon in our atmosphere. If we were to clear all these older trees, it is estimated that 22 trillion saplings would need to be planted in order for the country to remain carbon neutral. The space required for such a feat would cover the three times the area of Australia. 
Even though the Kwas have lost around 80% of their habitat since the arrival of the European settlers in 1788, the 20% of the now protected habitat they have left is in terrible condition. The habitat is fragmented and degraded, and this prevents the Kwas making the important social groups that they could be found in. Fragmentation has also caused the now isolated populations to show signs of inbreeding, which increases the chances of disease. If having to recover from the loss of over 116 million hectares of habitat wasn't bad enough, these Kwas now face the threat of the remaining 20% being cleared for agriculture, unsustainable forestry and urban development. It is well known that Kwas are incredibly picky eaters, only eating the leaves of a few selected species of eucalyptus tree. This pickiness extends so far that the Kwas will only regularly browse two or three species of eucalyptus out of the over 700 varieties that could potentially be available to them across their entire species range. These few species are known as the primary browse trees. However, koalas may not be quite as picky as they first seem, as they may occasionally browse other species, including some that are not eucalyptus. To be fair to these picky eaters, all 700 species of eucalyptus may not always be available to them, as different species of eucalyptus grow in different parts of Australia, so koalas from Queensland would eat a different diet from those living in Victoria. The koalas may consume up to 1 kilogram of leaves each night, which is around 7% of the total body weight of a southern koala. They need to eat this amount of leaves, as they will only adjust around 25% of the fibre they eat. Whilst koalas may be labelled as lazy, sleeping up to 20 hours per day and mainly being active at night, their lack of movement is to allow them to conserve energy to digest their toxic and low nutrition diet. In order to help them digest these fibrous meals, the koala has a cecum, which is a sort of intestinal pouch which is around 2 metres long. Inside their cecum live symbiotic bacteria which degrade the tannins and other toxic substances that are abundant in the diet of eucalyptus. Koalas do not, in most cases, need to drink water. They get all their moisture they require from the diet of gum leaves. However, they may need to drink in times of drought, when the leaves in their diet no longer contain sufficient moisture. If you are enjoying this video so far, remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified of future uploads. Even, even though koalas live in societies where they need to be able to meet other koalas, they generally live solitary lives. A koala's home range is made up of more than a dozen trees, with one tree being favoured above the rest. Unless it is breeding season, koalas will not visit each other's home trees. The home range of a koala is dependent on a few factors, including the habitat quality and certain demographics of the individual such as sex, age and social position. Female koalas are mostly tolerant of other female koalas, and mothers may even allow their daughters to remain present in their home range once they are grown up. However, their sons are not quite as lucky, as they are banished from the mother's territory as juveniles. The main time where females may battle with one another is during droughts, when fights occur to wind or defend the greenish trees. Communication in koalas is mainly done vocally and using scenting. Vocalisations generally occur for only 50 minutes per day, and males use bellows to announce their dominance within the area which has been likened to the sound of helicopters. When in one-on-one -on -one fights, males also use loud grunts to attempt to scare away their rival. Vocalisations are not just used by males, however, and joeys are known for squeaking if they feel threatened or lose their mother. This stimulates the mother to respond and secure her joey. Female koalas also only vocalise when they feel threatened. Scent marking is another way of communicating in koala culture, with dominant males using it most of all. Mature males use a dark scent gland on the centre of their chest. This area is called the stellar gland area, which is used to mark their territory and communicate dominance to other males. This scent gland excretes a dark and sticky substance, which is rubbed onto his home trees to claim his territory. Every male will have his own unique scent, and if an intruding male koala ignores the warning placed by the dominant male, then a one-on-one -on -one battle will occur. When in estrus, female koalas will also have their own unique scent, and the males will pick up on this scent to track down females who are ready for mating. At 18 months old, the male koalas are capable of breeding, but this doesn't mean the girls want anything to do with him, often being reluctant to mate and fighting with the male if they are just not in the mood. As soon as the deed is done, the male has no role in raising the joeys, but sometimes other juvenile koalas will allow the koala joeys to ride on their backs, taking some of the load off the mum. From August to February is the koala breeding season, and males will begin to bellow more frequently to show their dominance. This is also the time for the previous year's joeys to leave their mother and move into new territories. Sadly, this is the time many suburban koalas cross paths with threats such as cars and dogs, and may end up in the care of wildlife hospitals or specialised koala carers. The average lifespan for sub-adult koalas near highways or housing estates is up to two years less than those in other areas. At around the age of three or four, Female koalas will begin to breed, and produce a joey every year or two to three years. 
The number of joeys a female produces is dependent on her age and the quality of her habitat. After a 35-day gestation, the female will give birth to a 2 centimeter long blind, hairless and earless joey. This tiny joey will only weigh around 2 grams at birth. The mother gives no assistance to her offspring, which at first would seem unable to survive on its own. However, this tiny joey will climb to the pouch unaided by its mother, relying on its strong forelimbs and well-developed senses of smell and touch to locate the safety of its mother's pouch. Once inside, the joey will attach itself to one of two teats found inside the mother's pouch, the teat swelling inside the baby's mouth, which prevents the joey from being dislodged. The female will then contract the sphincter muscle at the opening of the pouch, preventing the underdeveloped joey from falling from the rear-facing pouch. At five months, the joey will first put its head out of the pouch. During weaning, the joey laps a substance called pap directly from the mother's anus, which is a bit disgusting, I am not going to lie. However, pap is a crucial part of a joey's diet during this time. Pap is pre-digested eucalyptus, and eating it allows the joey to digest toxic gum leaves, as the mother is passing on important microorganisms from her intestine. After the weaning period, the joey will completely emerge and cling onto its mother's back for about a year. Depending on when the mother has her next joey, the joey may stay with its mother for between one and three years. Females will become fully mature at around two years old, but males will not become fully mature until they reach the age of three or four. The lifespan of the female koala is around 12 years, which is two years longer than the males, who need to travel long distances and are often injured during fights. In captivity, however, koalas can live longer than 15 years. During the 1920s and 30s, koalas were killed for their fur. This caused their numbers to plummet from millions to just a few hundred thousand. Hunting led to koalas becoming practically extinct in the southern part of their range. Now, the greatest threat to koala populations is habitat loss. The IUCN estimates koala numbers to be around 100,000 to 500,000, although the Australian Koala Foundation believes there could be only around 80,000, or potentially koala numbers could be as low as 43,000. As previously mentioned, the habitat of koalas is severely fragmented. This has led to koalas being vulnerable to local extinction. Between the years of 1984 and 2012, the koala population decreased by 28%. The recent bushfires have also caused the population to decline, and there is risk that more bushfires will occur due to climate change and numbers will continue to fall. Disease has also proven detrimental to koalas, including chlamydia, a disease which lives in the body tissues of most healthy koalas. This disease makes females infertile, and is believed to be a natural control mechanism to limit the population so that trees are not ever browsed by the koalas, and ensures only the fittest animals survive to breed. However, when koalas are stressed, such as when they are suffering habitat loss, chlamydia can make koalas very sick and to be detrimental to populations. Another disease that is destroying koala populations is oxalate nephrosis, a kidney disease where calcium oxalate is deposited on the kidneys. Longleat Safari Park has its own tale of loss from its breeding program, having lost one of their females to the disease. However, her death was not meaningless. From her death, science has come on leaps and bounds towards making a solution for the fatal disease. Threats to koalas also include the threat from dogs and cars, with around 4,000 koalas being killed each year. The Australian Koala Foundation has stated that the only way it believes that koalas can be protected is with meaningful legislation. As of December 2020, there is currently no legislation anywhere in Australia that could do the job of protecting koalas and their habitat effectively. It has been scientifically proven that tree species influence the social structure of koala populations and the maintenance of each individual koala's home range. If the koalas cannot find an area of undisturbed habitat, they could be more prone to disease and have a lower rate of reproduction. On a slightly more positive note, there is hope for koalas via populations in captivity, with a breeding program in Lolly Safari Park in Wiltshire, England, very recently seeing success with a female joey named Hazel. Edinburgh Zoo have also had success and have even captured footage of a koala joey in the pouch after previous breedings. Thank you for watching another episode of Species Profile. If you enjoyed watching, click the like and subscribe buttons and click the notification bell if you want to be notified when the next video is uploaded.